morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Pardon me. We shall continue to sing out of the Grace Song Books this morning. And if you would please turn to number 129. <coughs> 129. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch
there's anybody that needs a cup with the communion emblems in it, and if you, if you don't have one, if you raise your hand, we'll get one to you right away. I'd like to start this morning reading John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Continuing 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And I'd like to read the first verse of 464 in the Grace Songbook. For God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be, the, be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then in John chapter 14, verse 19. Before, the, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. In these verses, we, we see that God sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. And Jesus himself knew his mission once he was sent down here on earth to love, heal, teach, and forgive. Yet to die on the cross for, to bear the sins of each and every one of us in the world. And then yet to rise from the dead and return to his Father in heaven by his side. So these things we want to remember as we partake of these emblems this morning, we have the bread which represents Christ's body that was nailed to the cross, and the fruit of the vine which represents his blood. Let's keep these things in thought as we protect these emblems this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and this time we have this morning to come together as we've been commanded to do to protect these emblems and as we protect this fruit of the vine which represents Christ's body that was that was beaten and whipped and, and then hung on the on the cross for, for our sins. We thank you for, so much for that sacrifice and for the love you have for us. Be with each and one protects this bread in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. And let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you again. Thank you for this time to have this memorial. And partake of this fruit of the vine which represents Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. As the blood flowed from his body, from the, from the nails driven into his hands and feet, and the wearing of the crown of thorns. Again, we be with each and every one who partakes of this fruit of the vine. Christ, Christ's name we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. As a matter of uh, time of convenience, we take this time to uh, pass the offering. It's time to get back with a cheerful heart.
to help support the work of the church here in the community and throughout the world. Yeah. As you, you've been commanded to do, to give with a cheerful heart. Uh, let's go to God in prayer at this time. Dear Lord, we want to thank you again this time we have to give back to you. We thank you for the talents that you blessed us with to use our hands on this earth that we can uh, get the things we need and supply ourselves for the short period we have on this earth. And at this time to give back to you to, to help support the work in, in, uh, in your church. As you be with those that give with a cheerful heart this morning, Christ, then we pray. Amen. If it's convenient, let's stand and turn to number 827. 827. We'll sing the song and remain standing, please, and we'll ask Brother Stan to lead our minds in prayer. 827. Sweet hour of prayer.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us here this morning as we gather here in thy name. We're so thankful for each and every one that's here this morning to, to worship thee. And those that are on, out online listening to us, we pray that you can be with us here someday to worship together uh, with us here at this, this building. Father, we're so thankful to wake up this morning and you give us another day of life here on this earth. To, to serve thee, we ask you to be a big part of our life, to give us the guidance and the support we need to be uh, faithful to thee and uh, to do your work here upon this earth, to spread the gospel and to help a have, have a helping hand to, to others here, and especially in this community that we live in. We're also so thankful for the opportunities that we have to serve abroad to different congregations throughout the world, that we can be part of that. and. We continue to pray for the work going on in these missionary works that uh, the gospel can be spread and, and uh, souls can be brought to you, Father. Father, we're always so thankful for the many blessings we receive from thee, and we always have things that we, we ask your helping hand in, especially those that are on our prayer list, Father. We, we ask your helping hand in their health situations and, and the things that um, they, they need to be restore back their natural health. We ask your helping hand there, Father. We're always thankful, Father, for those that minister to them and their, their willingness to serve in the health field. Uh, just be with them and uh, make good decisions in their health situations so that they can be restored to their natural health. Be that will, Father. We're always thankful for the many blessings you give us, to, the, the jobs and the opportunities we have in this world to, to earn a living and the things we enjoy in this life here on this earth. But uh, we know that, Father, that it's only for a short time, and we, we always pray that you can be with us in the things we do, that we, we can be righteous in the, your sight, Father. And we, at times we fell short of your glory, and we ask forgiveness through your Son, who gave his life upon the cross for us. And we're always so thankful for that, uh, the willingness that he had to deliver the gospel and to, to, get, to die that day for, for each and every one of us. And we pray that uh, we can be with you someday in, in, in heaven, Father. Father, we ask you to be with those that are uh, uh, seeking your, your help in this world, especially those who come forward to, to ask for prayers and uh, uh, become Christians. We, we pray that, uh, that fear and pride and, and uh, uh, things like that doesn't get in the way of them be becoming righteous with you, Father, and becoming Christians. and. Uh, uh, getting their lives back to back the way they need to be, Father. Just be for anyone that's uh, uh, in that situation. We pray for them here this morning, for the lost souls of the world, that they can somehow be reached and be able to uh, uh, know the, the, the glory and the, the, the greatness we have with you being in their lives. Uh, we ask you to be with the... the the elders, the deacons, this congregation, and the things that they do, Father, to make wise decisions to further the work here and, uh, and give the guidance to the to the ones here. We're so thankful for each and every one that's here this morning and being part of this worship service. That's what makes this worship service uh, as good as it is. Is because of the each and every individual that, that has a has a part in, in this service here this morning, Father. Father, we also ask you to be with Ryan as he delivers his message here today, and we're so thankful for his dedication to study and, and preach the gospel. Just uh, ask your blessing on him and his family and give him the, the, the way to, <clears throat> this morning to uh, the, you deliver his message that we can be well understood by, uh, by us as listeners this morning, Father, and we'll be able to understand it and apply it to everyday lives. Uh, I'm always so thankful, Father, for your many blessings, especially the opportunity we have to live in this country and the freedom we have just to be here this morning. Uh, we know there's uh, places in the world that they don't have this type of freedom that we have here, and we're so thankful for that. And we ask your, uh, your hand in the upcoming elections that the, the right people will be put in office that serve you best, Father, and, and uh, help us to be the ones that... Uh, uh, know know what what your needs are, and we ask you always just to watch over us and bless us, and uh, continue to be be in our lives. This is our prayer in your son's name, Amen. Amen. Be seated. <clears throat> I 
Mark your books, if you would, to number 904 for the Song of Encouragement after Ryan's lesson. And uh, Stan, I really appreciated what you said in your prayer about how important each and every person is to the worship in the assembly. It's not just the person up here leading the prayer or leading the singing. It's everybody's involvement, and it's very important. So I appreciate you mentioning that in your prayer. Let's turn number 560. <clears throat> 560. I care not today what the morrow may bring, in shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I am. reading this morning is Luke chapter 2 verses 46 and 47. After three days they found him in the temple courts sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. All right good morning church. Well that was awesome. Very good. Good morning from you all. And I'm so thankful for uh, the crowd that we have this morning. I know that we have uh, several visitors. I know that we have uh, some family here, uh, some of my own included, not to embarrass you guys, but uh, my aunt and uncle are here uh, from the Lagodi area, so glad to have them. But I know we have several others as, as well. And if you are visiting, we certainly want to welcome you to our uh, assembly this morning. I also know that um, we have a whole lot of people uh, in our midst to celebrate. And I want to make sure that we do that tonight. Tonight we're having an ice cream supper, and this ice cream supper is twofold. It's to honor uh, our young people, our kids that are going to be going back to school, but it's also to honor uh, those who are teachers uh, because they're having to say goodbye to their summer uh, now as well. And this week, the school year is going to get into full swing. 
I understand that it probably would be or would have been more convenient uh, to have a fellowship or a, a dinner uh, this afternoon after morning service, but I figure with the Strassenfest parade going on uh, that that would bring down uh, our numbers as well. So please let me encourage you to come and be a part of things uh, this evening. Uh, you don't have to be a teacher or a student to come and be a part of that. This is for everybody to come and enjoy, and the more the merrier. Uh, but we just wanted to do something to, as we try to do every year, to honor all those who are going back to school. And as we continue this morning, uh, I want to give a little bit of recognition. Now, I've been asked by a few of you, please don't make us stand up. So I'm not going to make you do that. But if you are a teacher or you work in the education system, or for that matter, if, if you have or are retired from the education system, would you please raise your hand? All right, raise them high. All right, very good. All right, so as you can see, if you look around, we've got several in our congregation that take part uh, in the education system. All right, now, if you're a student going to school next week, yell no really loud. All right, let's do that again. If you are a student going back to school, yell really loud no. No. <laughs> I only do that because... If we're honest, behind closed doors, isn't that what our kids are saying nowadays? <laughs> right before school starts, no! All right, that's what most of them do anyway. So I couldn't get as much participation as I want to with that. So maybe they're excited to go back to school. That's a good thing. But this morning, I did want to talk uh, a little bit about what that means. What that means for our families, what that means for our students, but especially for our students, because whenever we think about our young people, in the article on the front of your bulletin, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize about our kids is that for some of them, and for several of them, right now might be a little bit of an anxious time. Some of them are going to school for the first time. Some of them are upgrading or graduating to a new school. Some of them have moved to a different school. Some of them are kind of going through that awkward preteen time in their life where things are just changing a bunch in their life. And so there's a lot of nerves going into school. And sometimes as we approach these things, I know I was one of those, I was one of those kids that would uh, nonchalantly ask and casually ask, well, do we really need to go to school? Do we really need this? Do we really need that? And the short answer for me uh, this morning is, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I want us to think about that through the eyes of Jesus. But first of all, I want us to understand that all of us, as we go through our childhood, and then also once we get older, we get growing pains, don't we? When we get older, uh, when we become aged in years, we experience a different kind of growing pains, isn't it? Uh, where, where our bodies are, are starting to actually wear down. But as a young person, as a child, children experience growing pains. They experience different aches in their body because their bones are growing and sometimes they might grow a little bit faster than the tissue that's around those bones. Our tissue is growing. We're growing in height. We're growing in stature. And when that happens, we experience some growing pains from time to time. But even though we experience those things, it works out better for us, doesn't it? Because our bodies come to a point where they're at a healthy height. Uh, they're, at a, they're at a healthy figure in a sense. Whenever we think about what our bodies normally do naturally when they grow. They grow to a point to where they're intended and where your body intends. So we experience those pains. And those pains are needed from time to time. What I want us to think about this morning is... The life or the childhood of Jesus. Now, we briefly mentioned in Bible class this morning, uh, as Dan was teaching, one of the comments he made was, we don't know a whole lot about Jesus' childhood. 
And he was absolutely right. Jesus' younger years, his childhood, is probably the least talked about aspect of Jesus' life in God's word. But this morning, I want us to think about what it does say about Jesus' life and how you as children and how our children ought to be able to identify with Jesus, but also be encouraged by the life and the growth that Jesus experienced in his life. So that is what we're going to be looking at this morning. How can our kids and how can you as kids be Christ-like as children? Well, the first thing I want us to look at this morning is that you can be Christ-like by growing in wisdom. Christ-like kids grow in wisdom. In order to do that, we have to gain knowledge, do we not? And in most cases, the way in which we gain the most knowledge in our life is through the education system. Now, we obviously have to grow in knowledge at home as well. And when we think about our, our spiritual lives, whenever we think about our knowledge of God and what God wants in our lives, a lot of that we learn from our parents. But God wants us to grow in wisdom if we're going to be kids that are Christ line. And I, I want to go to the obvious verse, first of all, whenever we look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, we know that Jesus increased in wisdom. This might be a, a tough thing to, to think about for just a second, because whenever we think about who Jesus was, Maybe the first thing we say is, well, why would Jesus need to grow in wisdom? Why would Jesus need anything in order to become wiser? What we have to remember is, is that as a way in order to identify with us, to live among us, to experience life just like us, Jesus was born into this world just like us. And guess what? When Jesus was an infant, Jesus had the same cognitive ability, the same ability or lack of ability to think for himself as a child that age, as any other child that has ever come into existence in this world. His birth was a miracle. Being born of the Virgin Mary, Conceived by the Holy Spirit, that was an absolute miracle and that was something that was done and intended by God. And Jesus was God in the flesh as soon as he was born into this world. But if Jesus was also 100% human, he came into this world and he existed just like and in the same way as any other human. Jesus actually had to grow and increase in Wisdom, just like we do as children. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40, Luke tells us that Jesus was growing in that way. He was growing in knowledge and wisdom even before he went to the temple at the age of 12. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40 says, says that very thing, that before he went to the temple, he was growing in that knowledge and that wisdom. Even the Son of God was always learning. Even the Son of God was always learning. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 2, verses 46 through 47. Luke chapter 2, verses 46 through 47. Whenever he did go to the temple, this is what happened. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. 
It's interesting that when Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, whenever they went to Jerusalem, where was the first place that we understand that Jesus went to? We understand that Jesus went to the temple immediately. Knowing at that time that he already had a mission to go there. He already knew that that was the house of his father. And he was going there to listen to, to learn from, and to reason with all of the teachers that were there. Now, something that we need to understand about the Jewish culture at that time is that there were several things that were woven and intertwined into the Jewish religion. One of those things was your overall education. We might think today about how we, we feel blessed that there are some situations where we can get a Christian education. Our kids can go to a Christian school in some cases or whenever we live in some areas. Well, they have the same thing in Israel. They have the same thing in Jerusalem. They have the same thing in places like Nazareth where their daily education even was interwoven with their religion. And so whenever Jesus was growing, whenever he was growing in knowledge and wisdom with some of the basic parts of education that we might think of, he was also growing in wisdom of the Jewish faith. Obviously the faith that he had come to be a part of and he had come to save he had come to save his people, but he spent his whole entire childhood growing and learning and gaining wisdom about his people. Growing in wisdom was very valuable to our Lord, to our Savior, as he was growing as a child, just like we did. Gaining wisdom should be just as valuable to us. I've chosen a lot of Proverbs to read this morning because obviously we look at the book of Proverbs as a great book of wisdom with many of the Proverbs shared or written by Solomon himself, the wisest to have ever lived to our knowledge. And in Proverbs 16, in verse 16, it says, How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. And so the proverb here tells us that the wisdom that we can gain in this world, the wisdom that we can gain of God, the, the wisdom that we can gain in order to help us in our daily lives, that is way, way, way more valuable than any type of rock or stone or precious jewel, or anything like that, that we could come across. There's no money in the world that is worth more than wisdom. And that ought to tell us right off the bat, how important is it for us to prioritize gaining wisdom in our lives? How important is it to make sure that our children gain that wisdom? How important is it as kids, as children, is it for us to gain wisdom in this life. We know if we're going to be Christ-like, we need to seek after wisdom, just like Jesus did. The next one I think is important as well. It may not be as popular, but Christ-like kids need to grow in strength. By the way, that is something that we know Jesus actually did. I do believe that physical activity is godly. Going out and using your body, using your muscles to perform tasks, to do work, to do chores, to stay active, all of that is extremely important. And I believe Jesus did that very thing. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40 tells us that Jesus grew 
And the ESV there says Jesus grew and became strong. Obviously, I can just about guarantee you that being the son of, car of a carpenter, if uh, you were tasked with helping your father with carving wood back then, it would be very easy for you to, to uh, grow and become strong because that was a very hard job. They didn't have the electric saws that we have today. They didn't have the easy way to cut up wood that we have today where we could barely lift a finger. We just have to press a button in many cases. Those of you that work in carpentry, you're going to tell me, oh, there's a lot more to it than that. And I understand that. But we definitely have it a little bit easier than they would have back then. But Jesus grew strong even physically. That doesn't mean he was like a bodybuilder. It just means that he grew up to be a healthy boy. He was a healthy young man. And when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, this is an interesting verse because we might look at this and we might say, ah, see Ryan, uh, physical activity isn't very important. But actually what Paul is saying is it's already understand, it, it, it already should be understood that bodily training is of some value. All right? Paul makes it clear that it is valuable for our bodies to receive physical training. For us to have a measure of good health. Now Paul goes on to make that comparison to say, how much more is it to be healthy spiritually? How much more is it to gain knowledge and wisdom and to use that in our everyday lives? That's important, but he does say that our physical training is important. And the reason why I want to bring this up, young people, the reason why I want us to want to bring this up, parents, is because I think about our culture today. And I think about just so how, how easily, and myself included here, how easily we've just caved to allowing our kids to be on devices all the time to sit around and to watch TikTok videos for hours upon hours. And we think about the health problems, the health issues that we're seeing in our kids today. And that's the reason for it. It's because they're not concentrating and we're not concentrating on their physical health as we should. If we want our kids to be Christ-like, we need to understand that Jesus grew in strength physically. And that's something that we need to make sure we see as important in their lives throughout this school year and beyond. We know that Jesus' physical body was full of endurance, was it not? If you think about what Jesus was able to to endure by the time he was about 30 years old. That was something. And I'm going to tell you my opinion here, but I think it's pretty accurate. Based on what I was saying a while ago, the fact that Jesus came here, yes, he was 100% God in the flesh, but he was also 100% flesh. He was 100% human. And when it came to stuff like this, God the Father did not give Jesus any cheat codes. Did not allow him to get any special passes when it came to living on this earth. If he did, he would have said, oh no Jesus, you don't have to be tempted by the devil. I don't have to allow Satan to take you off and tempt you in uh, the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He wouldn't have had to have allowed that to happen to him. But Jesus' physical body needed to be tested in order to test his spirit as well. We know that by the time Jesus was about to start his ministry, what was he able 
to endure. Well, Matthew 4, verses 1 and 2 says, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus was in, he would have had to have been in pretty good physical shape to not eat anything for 40 days. Folks, I got a confession to make. I went to uh, an Evansville Otters game yesterday afternoon uh, because some friends invited me to that. And it was a thing where you could have all you can eat. I had three pieces of meat yesterday. All right. I get hungry pretty quick. And I indulge in that, in that hunger pretty quick. I, I try to satisfy that hunger pretty quick. I don't know if I can last 40 days. And so that's kind of on me, isn't it? To think, about, to think about what I need to work on as far as my endurance is concerned physically. To be physically healthy. First of all, to be a better example to others. But Jesus was a great example of physical endurance. And if we want to be more Christ-like kids, if we want to be more Christ-like, as we grow, we need to make sure that we grow in strength. Idleness is the exact opposite of what God desires. Idleness is not what God desires in our life. Two Proverbs for us to take a look at. Proverbs 16, 27, 28. A worthless man or idle man plots evil. And his speech is like a scorching fire. Now, the, I think the intent behind uh, these particular verses was, was to show us that whenever we have all of this idle time on our hands, whenever we're not uh, doing something productive, we're not, when we're not working on our own physical health, then you know what we do? We cause trouble elsewhere. Folks, I've kind of been a little ashamed and maybe somewhat ashamed of myself too, but it seems like the last two or three weeks, everybody's got something to say on Facebook and on Instagram with all the things that are, that are going on in our world and in our culture. And we act, as Christians, we act like we ought to be surprised at all the evil that's going on in this world. And we all have something to say about this or that. I want to encourage you this morning, and I want to encourage our kids that instead of always having something to say about this world, let's go out in this world and be what we're supposed to be Amen. toward other people. Let's be that. That means we got to get up off of our behinds and go and do. And as young people, I know that you're going to go into a very hard situations, pressured situations, you're going to be around kids that are doing things that your mom and dad said, if we want to be like Jesus, we can't do those things. And that's hard and that's tough. And it's not always going to work for us to tell other people what not to do. We just need to live the example no matter what our friends at school are doing. We need to live that example out. And if we live that example out long enough, guess what will happen? wonder why they're living that way you know what they seem to be a much more pleasant person than others around me because they're living for something a little bit different what is that live in a way where other people want to know more they want to know why idleness shouldn't be a part of that life proverbs 13 and verse 4 the soul, of the, slug, the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. We don't want to be idle. We want to be building up our strength. We want to be building up our wisdom so that we can be successful in life. If we just sit and sleep, if we just have dreams about what we want to be one day, but we never work for those dreams. We will never achieve those dreams. We cannot be idle as young people that want to follow Christ. 
Lastly, this morning, Christ, like kids, seek God's favor. This can go into that idea of idleness and, and not, not just saying, but doing. Doing, being who God wants us to be. Christ-like kids seek God's favor. I want us to think about the favor that Jesus got from his heavenly father. See, the father, Father God, looked down on Jesus proudly. And it wasn't just because Jesus was born into this world by a virgin. Jesus Christ didn't do that. God the Father and the Holy Spirit are the ones who did that. But you know what the father was banking on? My son, the Lord Jesus, is going to grow up. And he's going to be the sacrifice for the world. But before he does that, he needs to prove to me that even he can overcome temptation. That even he can overcome the world in the way that he lives his life. That he needs to seek my favor. And kiddos, that ought to be what we want to do, what we desire to do each and every day of our life. Each and every moment ought to be about how can I please God? Because ultimately, He is who we're going to answer to in the end. We need to seek His favor. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40 tells us that as a child, the favor of God was upon Jesus. Meaning that even as a young one, he was showing favor with God in how he was gaining knowledge and wisdom and strength. He was growing as God's child. Luke chapter 3 and verse 22. When... Jesus was at the point of his baptism when he came to the Jordan and he presented himself before John the Baptist. It says he was baptized, verse 22, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. While we know that Jesus grew in the favor of God, we know that from the previous passage that was the case. We also know this. Nobody, no other human being to our knowledge had ever heard the voice of God proclaim it out loud for others to hear. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This was the first that we know of verbal and public declaration that God had found favor in his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus had earned that favor in the way that he had lived his life up to this point. You know, some manuscripts here, some of the early manuscripts, whenever we think about, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased, some of those manuscripts will say, you are my beloved son, today I have begotten you. And you know what that means? Today I claim you as my son. Isn't that interesting? Whenever we think about it that way, God officially claims Jesus Christ as his son begotten son, the chosen son, the the son that was his, that he chose to bring down to this earth and to be the chosen one to die for us. There's a lot of choosing going on there. Obviously, God made that choice. The father made that choice for his son to come down. But he makes that proclamation before others as Jesus proves himself. Again, this would indicate to me the acceptance of the Father, of Jesus, as his true Son. And young people, adults, young Christians, this ought to be how we live our Christian lives every single day. Whose favor are we seeking? We ought to be seeking 
the favor of the Lord, the favor, the favor of the Father. We ought to do that. However, here's another thing that I want us to observe. It was because of Jesus' growing favor with the Father that he also gained favor with man. He also gained favor with man in that way. I want us to basically concentrate just for a minute on how it was that Jesus gained favor with mankind. Because there's a lot of ways in which we can gain favor with man, right? We can do things just to please man. We can say, oh, well, you know, other people are doing this. And in order to be cool, in order to fit in, in order to be in with the crowd, then I need to do these things too. No, that's the wrong kind of favor. If we're in favor with man because we're doing what, what people want us to do, what our friends want us to do, then we're falling out of favor with God when we do that. But you know what? We can be favorable to other people by living for God and being favorable with Him. Luke 2.52 tells us that Jesus increased in favor with both God and man. And I would guarantee you that it says God and man. It says God first for a reason. Because God is who he was trying to be in favor with first and foremost. But as Jesus lived godly, as he showed love and as he showed care, and as Jesus was a dependable person to be around, he also gained favor with mankind. You know, over and over again, this isn't a bragging thing, it's just an observation. Most bosses that I've ever talked to, not necessarily people who were my boss, but most people who were in charge of companies, who were a boss over several people, in most cases, you know who they would tell me are the most dedicated and most trustworthy employees? It's those who are devoted Christians. I'm not saying it's just people that wear the name Christian, that claim that they're Christians, but it's those whom that particular boss can tell they actually live out a Christian life. They live for Jesus. And because they live for Jesus, then they're seen as trustworthy, dependable, someone that they can count on to get the job done, not only to get the job done, but to go above and beyond what they were asked to do. Jesus was that way. He grew in favor with both God and man. Here's something else we know. Whenever we look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 51, we understand that uh, as Jesus came home from the temple, I guess they didn't like it too much that he had ran off to the temple. But we, you know what it says Jesus did whenever they went back home to Nazareth? Jesus obeyed his parents. Jesus, the word there that's used is Jesus was submissive to his parents from that point forward. The respect he was showing his mom and dad no doubt the respect he was showing his teachers, the way that he was living his life, he was gaining such favor with people that even his own mother was like, Man, this boy is unique. This boy's different from other boys. I like it. But she treasured it up within her heart as she observed that. And here's what I want us to understand about Jesus. In the adult class this morning, uh, Dan talked about how Jesus probably was a popular person because of the, the way he was able to speak, the things that he said. I can tell you this, Jesus was not a popular person because of how he looked. And you know what? That is probably the biggest concentration that our young people struggle with today. You think you've got to look a certain way to be popular. You think you've got to wear the certain clothes that other people are wearing. When we do that, we try to be people pleasers first. We try to do everything we can to, to beautify ourselves because we don't have confidence in how we look. I want to show you something about Jesus' physical appearance. 
something that was prophesied about Jesus. Isaiah 53 and verse 2 says this about Jesus. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus was not some handsome hunk that all these ladies were going to be falling for. Jesus was not someone that you would look at physically and say, well, he's a pleasant looking fellow. I think I'm going to follow him. The Bible tells us that that's contrary to what Jesus was like. You know what people were attracted to? They were attracted to the message that Jesus gave and what he offered. People can be attracted to the message that you present when you present the message of Jesus and how you live your life. We know that what was attractive about Jesus was his faithfulness to the Father and his desire for others to be faithful. I want to close with this passage just on a page by itself. But Proverbs 3, verses 3 through 4. And folks, I know we're running a little bit late. I've got to get home because of the parade myself because it runs down my street. But I want us to take a look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. This passage says, Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. The proverb tells us what's the priority. Do everything you can to be in the favor of the Lord first. And then you will find yourself predominantly in the favor of man. How does that, how does that come about? Take care of yourself. Grow in wisdom and in stature. And value the things that are freely given to us. Like the education that we can receive. If we do that, then we will grow up just like Jesus did as a tender shoot. And we can become a powerful force in this world for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Kids, I hope that you'll do that this school year. Teachers, I hope that you'll help your students do that very thing. Parents, I hope that you'll bring your kids along as you try to do that very thing in your Christian life. This time, we're going to offer a song of invitation. We offer this invitation for someone who might need prayers at this time. Maybe you have fallen off of the wisdom wagon. Maybe you aren't seeking the wisdom of God as you should, and that's been reflected in how you've lived your life and your lack of example to the ones that you love. Folks, the only time it's too late to change that is when you've passed from this world and you're still here, you're still breathing. Let's change that this morning. If you need prayers, we'd love to pray with you. If you need to be restored to the church, we'd love to help you do that. If you're here this morning and you're not yet a child of God, if you know what God desires in your life, if you know what Jesus has done for you, you're ready to declare him as your Lord and Savior, but you're also ready to repent of your sins and be baptized into Christ. We'd love to help you do that this morning. If you need to come for either reason, would you come now as we together stand as we sing? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His graces? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you
Brian, you touched on a great many points this morning. And they were good points. And I think the thing to remember is we get so caught up in what they call social media. But I want you to know something. This is social media right here. This is social media, face-to-face, -face, fellowship with one with another. That's true social media. The rest of it's just communication or entertainment. And so remember that. And parents, pay attention to what your kids are looking at on, on TikTok and such like stuff. So appreciate that message. Got one announcement here from Kent Kixmiller. He got a text this morning that his dad's going to the hospital. His dad's Art Kixmiller that a lot of us know. And he, so he's gone to the hospital, so if Kent's asking to keep Art in prayer. And so we will definitely do that. And then have some really good news. We have a couple, Pam and, and uh, uh, Pam, and, and <laughs> I'm so terrible with names, Ron and Pam. <laughs> Uh, Hickman. Have, <laughs> I've been talking to Dwyer's and the Hickmans, I'm getting confused. Anyway, Ron, Ron and Pam Hickman have expressed a desire to become members of this congregation and serve with us. And so we want to welcome them. That's that couple there. That's the good looking guy with the beard, not me. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so just get to know them when after we're dismissed. So we will. Go ahead and have a prayer to close us out, and then afterwards, as our custom is, we will sing happy birthday to Glenda, Mandy, Cole, Kathy, and Pam. Pam, first, yeah, there you go, you're all ready, so there we go. Almighty Father, we're, as always, so thankful to be here on another Lord's Day. Father, we're thankful for the church that meets in this place. We're thankful for the love and hope that we share together. Father, we're thankful for Ryan and his ability to preach, and we're thankful for the message he's heard this morning. We pray, Father, it's sunk into the hearts of the young folks here and the parents so that we're, we pay attention to what's being done around us and so we can be the people that you would have us to be. Father, we're so Thankful for each and every soul that's present here this morning. We pray that you bless us, help us to re return tonight. Father, we particularly pray for Kent's dad, Art, that's been taken to the hospital. We know not why, but we ask your blessing on him. We're thankful, Father, to see Mandy here this morning. We ask your blessing on her. And you pray for comfort for her. And Father, we just uh, so thankful for this country. But Father, help us to pay attention to the things that are said. Help us to try to discern the truth from the lies as things go on in this election year. But Father, we're not about politics. We're about Jesus. So Father, we thank you so much for his sacrifice that has done so much for us if we obey, the, obey your will. So Father, we just uh, pray that you forgive us for our sins and we repent. Help us to return next next time. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Glenda, Mandy, Cole, Kathy, and Pam. Happy birthday to you. Ha, ha, ha.